Lindsay Anderson, the director of the film you're about to see, died unexpectedly this year. He began his career as a critic, founding the influential magazine Sequence. He then worked as a documentary maker under the slogan Free Cinema, and then as a director at the Royal Court Theatre in its great early years under George Devine. In 1962, he directed his first feature film, This Sporting Life. Amongst other things, I remember that he introduced me to the great Czech films of the 1960s. He was, in other words, one of that group of men and women who changed the face of Britain in the late 1950s, helping to bring about the destruction of the old rigidly class-bound society. In the cinema, he, along with his colleagues Tony Richardson and Carol Rice, and others like Jack Clayton, literally transformed the British film industry by insisting it be more substantial and responsible, by making what came to be known and dismissed as kitchen sink films, but which actually meant making films that were relevant to British life as lived by most people. This doesn't mean they just made films about the working class. It meant the films explored the emotional life of Britain with an intensity and commitment and responsibility that had been missing before. If was the second of only a handful of films that Lindsay directed. It was made for the production company where I worked and I was assigned to be one of Lindsay's assistants, although I'd known him for 10 years. It came in under the title Crusaders and then briefly was called Come the Revolution until a splendid woman called Daphne Hunter, who was typing the title page, got cross with all this dithering and said, oh, call it if. It was made in the spring of 1968, at precisely the time when people from Washington to Paris, and most importantly in Prague, were rising up against their governments. My jobs was to cut out pictures from newspapers, which would be made into the collages that the boys stick on their study walls. In May 1968, I was cutting out photographs of student protest. They were the same scenes we had just shot in March. Cheltenham College, Lindsay's old school, inexplicably but rather maturely, allowed us to make most of the film there. Parts of the film are in colour and parts in black and white. As I recall, this was for reasons of economy rather than art, although it appealed to Lindsay's sense of anarchy. When the film was first shown, Lindsay appeared on stage before a wildly applauding audience crying, the rest is up to you. I don't think Lindsay actually believed in the revolution, but he believed you should stand up for what you believe in. He would say the word commitment very clearly and patiently, assuming that no one listening to him would have the first idea what the word meant. He was like a Pied Piper to the young, in many ways a rather Mr. Chips-like figure towards the end, to whom you showed your films or brought your work with great trepidation. And I cannot believe he is dead. A bright piercing light has gone out.